Coming up on the guest list, we have Leanne Morgan. How did you get into comedy and what do you enjoy about it? Okay, my darling. Um, I married my husband uh, after we met at the University of Tennessee, and he moved me to the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. And I had my first baby, and I wanted to stay at home with him and nurse. And I had always wanted to be in show business and, and thought I was funny. But, you know, being raised in a little bitty farm community, I didn't have the confidence to I – I would have never moved to L.A. at 18 and tried to make it or anything like that. So anyway – I had my first baby, and one of my girlfriends sold jewelry like Tupperware in women's homes. And she said, you know, you could get out and meet people, and you can make a little money while you're a stay-at-home mom. And, um, and honey, I didn't even care about jewelry. And I got out and started schlepping that jewelry in East Tennessee, and women thought I was funny and started booking me a year in advance. And the company noticed and asked me to start speaking at their big rally things. And that's how I got started. That is incredible. Thank you. Uh, and what do you enjoy about being up there on stage and entertaining people? Because, you know, it's hard being a parent and and you kind of like, you know, make us feel better about it. <laughs> the challenges. Well, um, you know, it, I, it, when it's when it's good, when the audience is with me, I mean, there's nothing like it. It's almost like I'm riding a wave and it's just like being with your best friends and laughing and having a good time because I talk about my children and my husband and going through menopause and I'm a grandmama now. It's now I talk about things that people relate to. So it's like being in that living room selling jewelry with your very best friends and everybody's eating a dip and having a good time. I swear that's what my comedy feels like. I don't I know there's, you know, these wonderful stand ups that I admire, but mine, I think, is more about like community. I really do. Because, you know, mama's People having babies and parenting, that's that's your own community, and and you need to talk about it, you know, being pregnant and what you go through, and, you know, it, bring, it bonds people together. I've been following you on Instagram. I've seen the videos of you shopping at Costco, you know, after shopping with your daughter and then your, your grandbaby. Uh, how many kids do you have, and, and you have one grandbaby, too, right, for people who don't know? Yes, I have three children, a boy and two girls. My boy is 29, my girls are 26 and 25, and then my grandbabies too, and I've got another grandbaby come in June. That's exciting. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. we're so excited. Okay, so great. Let's go through these tips that they outlined here for us. Uh, okay. Number one is, uh, why is it a bad idea to try to be cool like your kids? Oh, my gosh, Rebecca, I have seen people do that, and it doesn't end well. You know, little children need a mama and daddy. They need their parents. They don't need their best friend. Can you imagine if you were, if you try to be their friend? I mean, they need boundaries. They need rules. We all need rules, you know, and I just think I've known people that wanted to be their children's best friend, and it, and they end up like... And I don't want to, you know, we maybe don't need to get this heavy, but, you know, like start drinking with their kids and their kids are underage or stuff like that. And that's not good. Who thought that was a good idea, you know, or or wanting to talk about, um, uh, I know a lot of women that want their girls to date real young and be and have boyfriends and, you know, before they're too, before they're at the right age to do that, but the, the, the mom is kind of living through them. None of that's good. Yeah, I see that here, too. And the, the parents doing edibles now with their kids, like pot, because it's legal in Arizona now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And throwing parties for them. And oh, it's you crazy. are kidding me, Rebecca. No. Yeah, it's happening. It's it's I mean, it probably t with a minority of people, but still, you know, like a small number. But still, yeah, it's still fr frustrating to see, you know. But my, my kids will point it out and say they think it's lame that the parents do that, try to be cool like that. So it's interesting you say that. Oh, uh, are you thankful for that? Yeah. Your kids feel that way. Um, you say, though, that like uh, being old fashioned in your values will teach your kids how to be more respectful and responsible. So uh, tell me about how you came to that conclusion, what you think about that. Um, You know, Rebecca, I knew... When I had these children, I thought, you know, there's right and wrong. 
and when you teach children that there's right and wrong. And all right, say that to me. Can you say that to me again? Because I want to make sure I get that right. Sure. Being old fashioned in your values will teach your kids how to be more respectful and responsible. Yes. Okay. Um, I do think that still saying thank you, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, but see, I'm from the South, but not using ugly language. You know, I just think all those old fashioned ideas now that are old fashioned that I just was raised with is, you know, what we should be doing. I think teaches children to grow up and be more respectful to adults. And, um, you know, we have to have decorum. <laughs> I mean, I, we can't just let everything go and, you know, and not show that respect for people, for, for human beings. Yeah, definitely. Um, how can we lovingly set boundaries with our kids? Like uh, that, some of the tips they gave here is, um, you know, don't let your kids do whatever they wish. Make sure they have like reasonable bedtime and chores to do um, and earn the benefits of living under your roof. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm sitting here now with a grandbaby and watching my my boy and his wife, who I'm in love with his wife. She's like another child to me. And they live 20 minutes from me. And I'm watching them parent. And, and of course, our baby's only two. And I say my baby because I feel like he's my baby, too. And they they both work full time and they've got him in daycare. And I didn't put my children in daycare. And I'll be honest, when they said they were both going to work and the baby was going to daycare, it worried me. And I thought, oh, my gosh, daycare. I have sat there and watched how wonderful it is for that baby to have boundaries, to be on a schedule. He is thriving. And and I, and I wonder if I look back on my children and I think, oh, were we loosey-goosey and how did I even raise these children? Now, I did not, I was not going over letters probably like I should have, but I did have bedtimes and I did have, you know, when we were going to eat and I tried to keep them on a schedule the best I could. But the way I see this baby being at daycare, it is, children need boundaries and they thrive in that. And I, and I just, um, Oh gosh, Rebecca, I've gotten off track, honey. I just want to, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's fine. I it, It's interesting you say that because I did the same thing, stayed home with my kids and I always felt like sending kids to daycare would be a disservice to them. But, but you're right. It can be the, the, um, that, that'll make a lot of parents feel better. I think if they do have to send their kids to daycare, because it does um, put them on a set schedule and they like that. They like that structure. Right. So it's, it can be a good thing. Yes. And yes. And he is social and he, he loves his little friends and they say, Charles, when he comes in the door and he's learning, we, you know, we know that if there's a conflict, like he's learning, somebody grabs a toy that you learn from all that. All that's good. It really is. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then what about kids who call their parents by their first names? Um, my husband's from Minnesota. They tend to do that up there. They don't call them mom and dad. <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, my baby child will say, Leanne, from across the room now. And I, my mama is Lucille, and I would, I, to get her attention because she'd be talking to somebody because we're talkers, I would say Lucille, but I've always called her mama too. But um, yeah, it, I, you know, I, that we're from the country. I don't know. I don't know if that's bad or good. Minnesota people do that. I don't know. He doesn't, and his friends do it. I don't know if that's a Minnesota thing. <laughs> Well, I uh, mine have always called me mama, but every once in a while they'll yell to get my attention because I'm usually talking to somebody in Walgreens, you know, somebody I don't even know. I need people, Rebecca. And so I, I end up talking. I think that's the only reason mine call me that is they're just trying to get my attention and say, let's get out of here, you know. That's actually a, not a bad technique. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, and then what about kids barging into your bedroom anytime, day or night when the door is closed? I mean, you need to teach them set boundaries that way as well, too, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, Rebecca, because um, a mom and daddy need their time together. You know, I, I realize now at 57 and being a grandmother and my children leaving home and I'm an empty nester, it is so important 
I realize now to nurture that relationship with your husband and have that time behind the door, if you know what I mean, because men need that. You know, that's the way God made them. But um, I didn't realize, I mean, I knew in my heart that that was so important. But, you know, when you're having, when you got little children at home and then teenagers and everybody's got sports and you're, you know, and, the, and everybody's got a test and you've got a crock pot plugged in and everybody's busy and all that. Time just seems to go by. And then here you are, an empty nester with your husband. And it really is a, um, you really do need to nurture that because it's just going to be you and him. And children need to know that their mom and daddy are all right. and that They've got their alone time and that that you're right. People don't need to be. That's a good question. Little children don't need to be in and out all night long and doing because it's bigger than that. It's, you know, the relationship with the mom and daddy is so much bigger. And for these children in their future and their relationships, I just did not realize how profound it was until now I'm at my age. Absolutely. That is a good reminder for people because you do get caught up in it and put those kids first and, you know, that's not necessarily a good thing in the long run. Very, that's a good reminder. Um, and then we have embracing your mom body at any age. <laughs> Tips for that. Like, please don't try to dress like your daughter. I haven't had a waist in decades and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I could not wear all these crop tops. Why is everything cropped? I have to have a flowy top, and and I struggle with this all the time, and I'm really trying to, because my Netflix special is coming out April the 11th, and I've sat in the editing room and watched myself, and I'm supposed to be looking at what's funny and, you know, my timing and all that, and you know what I've been focusing on, Rebecca? What? I have looked at my neck. I've looked at my lips that are gone. I've um, I thought, are these jails? Why are my breasts the size of watermelons? You know, full, I mean, menopausal. That I don't know what has happened to them. I sit and look at all these things, and that is not what I should be doing. And I, and I told one of my good friends last night when I was watching it, I said, you know, I need to embrace the fact that I am... I'm alive. I'm 57. I'm in good health. My I could get pregnant like that. Praise God, Rebecca. I was my body. I must have a strong constitution. I breastfed all of them as long as they let me. I uh, I always my body has worked wonderful for me, and I should respect my body and be thankful for where I am today, and that it and I'm holding up and and you know, but I. And I really now at 57, I want people to know when you're a young mom and you're at home and you're these are the things you need to be doing. Take care of yourself. Go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Take time to go to the bathroom. Exercise really and truly for to, so that you can sleep better at night, so that you can get up and you can be all you can be for these children and your husband um, and yourself and then and, and relieve that stress and then also eat right. If I if somebody told me and you think that I would have known that and I sound like an idiot, but when you're in the in the middle of raising a bunch of kids, you know, you just you're eating the rest of their grilled cheese that they didn't eat and the rest of their mac and cheese and all that. And then I found myself when I was younger, like I wouldn't take time to to go to the bathroom. I wouldn't take time to to go to the gym. I would think, oh, well, they're going to get the flu or whatever. We don't all need to go to the gym, but we all need to go to the gym. And and now I need to embrace this body for what it is and uh it's great you know i'm still cute and i do, and i'm not 20 and it's okay and i also when you say mom jeans i do love a good high waist i love a good high waist i think that holds in my menopausal stomach and I like a good kick crop. And I think everybody out there ought to get a good high-waisted jean with a kick crop and get a cute boot or a cute booty for spring, you know, or a strappy heel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I think that's great advice. I think you could write a, a like a parenting book. Honestly, like with all your life advice, that would be great <laughs> for people. Rebecca. Oh, honey, I, thank yeah. you, Angel. Sure. Oh, Lord, honey, I feel like I ramble and talk and forget. Now that I'm in menopause, I think, 
what yeah. was I doing? In? No, I can relate. I'm I'm in the same boat with you. So I, I totally get it. No, you're doing great. And I'm excited to see your Netflix special. Aren't you excited? Have you done this before for Netflix or is this the first one? No, honey, this is the first time. Wow. And I'm the only um, person in my lane that's got a Netflix special. I mean, I don't think, you know, you don't see many grandmamas yeah on netflix and that have gone through menopause so it's usually a lot of younger hipper people but um so i think that's why they're excited and why they wanted me to have one and i oh it was a dream of mine and i i really i'm a pretty optimistic person but i thought there's no way netflix is gonna have me and then it happened and that drops april the 11th and it's called i'm every woman that's awesome. So it sounds like your career has reached its pinnacle, like in, in here you are a grandma. <laughs> I know, Rebecca. Okay. I've done this 20 something years. My baby was in LA with me got working on new material for my new tour, just getting started tour that's starting this Friday. And it's a hundred cities across the United States. And she's 25. I got started in comedy when she was 18 months old and went to my first comedy club. And I did this all those years raising three children. And and there would be times that I would have television deals for sitcoms with ABC or, you know, some big network. And then it wouldn't happen. And then there were other times where I tell a kid and say I couldn't get arrested. But what I mean by that is I could not get booked. Nobody cared. But I would stay. I stuck it out. And then when I knew this grandbaby was coming, I thought, you know what? I might just bow out of this thing. I've had a good time, but I know they'll need me to help and all that. And then this blew up and I started selling out all over the United States and people started, you know, sharing my clips and all that kind of stuff on social media changed my life. Wow. And, um, and then all this started happening for me. That's why I named the the second tour Just Getting Started, because I feel like I'm just getting started at 57. And I want people to know that you can do anything. These mamas, I did this with three children. I don't know, through the grace of God, but, it, but never give up. You can always pivot. If something's not working, try something else. If there are anything is possible. If this is happening for me, Anything is possible.